Hey everyone, a little bit of a different video today, as you can probably tell based on where I am and what I have in front of me. Uh, so let's get into it. For those who don't know me, my name is Patrick Hazler and I'm a musician, composer, producer and sound designer, but I also paint miniatures. I first started painting miniatures as a kid in the early 2000s. I was really into Lord of the Rings and I still kind of am, uh, but I was really into Lord of the Rings as a kid and Games Workshop's Middle Earth strategy battle game really, really excited me. I think at that time it was just the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game, but I was super into the Lord of the Rings property and the idea of having this army of miniatures really excited me. But at that time I didn't have very good fine motor skills and also not a lot of patience, so I wasn't a very good painter and I didn't really produce much and I thought I would enjoy it more than I actually did. So after not too long I gave it up and kind of packed away and got rid of all the things that I did with it and I just forgot about it for a few years. Then about five years ago I got into Dungeons and Dragons in a big way and that led to getting miniatures for tabletop combat. I mainly started with pre-painted miniatures, but the idea of being able to paint my own miniatures and have the exact miniatures that I wanted really excited me. So that kind of eventually led into buying unpainted miniatures and then getting the things to be able to paint them myself. And now, I am definitely a miniature painter. Although I had some unpainted miniatures for Dungeons & Dragons for a while, I only started to get the things to actually paint them around the middle of 2021, and only properly started putting in effort and finishing miniatures around November of 2021, so just over a year ago. So that's kind of the story of how I got into miniature painting. The rest of this video is basically going to be a rundown of all the miniatures here on this table, which are all the miniatures I've painted since November up until now, and a few ones that I'm working on at the moment. So let's jump in. The first model I painted was this Owlbear, which is a Dungeons & Dragons model. And this was the one that I got in the middle of 2021 and then properly finished up in November. This is the one that came with the starter paint set. So it had all the paints required to paint this little miniature. And this was basically entirely done with those starter set paints. Um, yeah, it's just a little neat Dungeons and Dragons miniature. Uh, it's a pretty good sculpt and I've only really done some basic techniques on there, dry brushing, uh, a little bit of washing, but it actually looks pretty good. Feathers work really well with a dry brush. Um, so this was a great first model because with only a little bit of effort and a little bit of skill it actually came out really really well. And one of the most daunting things with painting miniatures is painting the eyes and this thing has nice big eyes which were really easy to paint. So even though this was the first eyes I painted on a miniature I think they might just be my best. The other miniature I painted around this time was another Dungeons and Dragons miniature. This is a beholder or I guess technically it's a zombie beholder um, but I painted it up to look like Xanathar. Um, the character from Dungeons and Dragons. Not much to say, it's not really that special, uh, but it's a great Beholder Mini and I can't wait to use it in a game. The next one I painted is not that great. It's this Dire Troll, um, and the paint job is pretty... I don't want to be too hard on myself, but it's pretty bad. It's definitely good enough to go on the table, especially given that it's only gonna last for one fight, and that's the thing with Dungeons and Dragons, is if you have a big monster, your players kind of take it out pretty quickly. Um, so this one's all right for the tabletop, but I wouldn't say it's my best. In fact, I might even say it's my worst paint job. So the next miniature I painted for Dungeons and Dragons was this blue dragon, which I'm actually quite happy with. I did this really effective, I think, blend from purple on the top of the scales down to blue on the bottom. So it's a blue dragon, but it kind of looks like a purple and blue dragon, and I really liked how it turned out. Around the end of 2021, I started playing a game set in the world of Harry Potter, and a lot of you are probably thinking, well, Harry Potter, very problematic, JK Rowling, very problematic person, and I definitely agree. But this game was really an opportunity for us as players in my game to really deconstruct everything that's wrong with that property and kind of take it into our own. I think uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to critique what is happening in that world while still having fun with the good parts of it. So for that game, we had a few player characters and I have these miniatures here. These, th whoop. These three player characters, you can see they're all dressed in yellow because they're in Hufflepuff house. They're really not that great a paint job, but again, they're all right for just the tabletop. It's a shame that even though they're player characters, they're not that great because the player characters are meant to be pretty important. I'm not that great at painting human miniatures. So uh, that's something I've kind of learned. I should probably try and get better. And I think I definitely have, um, but these three are an example of 
why I prefer to paint bigger monsters. Also in that game, we had a player character who was a druid and liked to wild shape into a goat. I think technically within the world of um, the Wizarding World, they were Animagus. So their Animagus animal was a goat. And so I got a friend of mine to 3D print this little goat miniature which I painted up for that game. And that druid character also really liked to summon animals and the am animal that they summoned was a rhino called Chloe. So I also got my friend to 3D print me a little rhino. And one of my players was uh, a bit crazy with their character choice. Instead of playing a, a student at Hogwarts, they chose to play a sentient lawnmower who is the groundskeeper. <laughs> um, so again, I got my friend to 3D print me a little lawnmower miniature and this was the character Quentin and I don't know if I will ever use this in a game again but if I need to I have a lawnmower miniature. One of the encounters in that game was encountering the old beat up Ford Flying Anglia which Ron and Harry used to fly to Hogwarts at the start of the second book. Um, so to create this flying Ford Anglia miniature I took a just like a little matchbox car and reprimed it and repainted it and then covered it in flocking and um, grass tufts and then mounted it to this base with a little bit of hot glue and this worked great as the flying Fort Anglia. It's not the exact same car model but it's close enough and this was a lot of fun to have in the game. This was the model where I really started to realize okay I'm actually pretty good at painting miniatures. Um, I wouldn't say I'm great, but I'm definitely starting to get pretty alright at it and this model I think is one that I'm really proud of. Around that point I realised I was definitely getting into an hour, having fun and I was starting to get quite good. And so one of the things I did was I acquired my first miniature from Games Workshop. Now Games Workshop miniatures are much better sculpts than the ones that they use for the Dungeons and Dragons miniatures. Um, they're much more detail and I think they're much easier to paint. Uh, and that's something that I discovered through painting my first miniature from Games Workshop, this Ogroid Thermoturge. I really only got into the Games Workshop miniatures because they were good designs to use for Dungeons and Dragons. So this was one that I thought would be great to use as a troll or a demon or just a unique monster. I think I did pretty well with the flame effects on the staff. It's my first time doing skin quite well with this purple skin. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I really like the lava base as well. This was one of the first times I kind of sculpted an original base design more than just throwing some grass on. This one's really cool. So the lava is kind of made out of milliput and the little bubbles are made of little balls of rolled up milliput. And then the rocks here are just some cork. And it's quite a simple but effective lava base for this uh, ogre troll thing. After painting that Ogroid Thaumaturge I realised I really loved those Games Workshop miniatures and so for Christmas one of the things that I got was this lovely Dankhold Trogoth and this was a, another step up in my painting I think. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I used a lot of new techniques and ideas. I did some object source lighting from the mushroom on the back of his legs. Yeah, this is just one that I'm really happy with and I've been able to use it in a game. I made a custom stat block for Dungeons and Dragons for this monster and we had a lot of fun um, fighting it. Or my players had a lot of fun, I think. Now that we're starting to get to the miniatures that are actually good, I want to take a quick step back in time to those early days in the early 2000s. I lost most of the miniatures that I painted at that time, but digging through my old things, I was able to find a few that survived. So these three here are some metal miniatures that I found surviving in my little collection. So this one here is Saruman the White from the Scouring the Shire set. And as you can see, the paint is actually coming off of the metal. So I think I didn't even prime this miniature before painting it. It's really beaten up and I might give a try of repainting it. There's also this one, which I think is a Haradrim Assassin, I'm guessing. Um, again, a pretty awful paint job. Again, I might repaint this one, but again, pretty cool that I have this old little relic from when I was a kid. And then there's this one here who is Lurtz, the leader of the Urukai of Isengard. I think I didn't paint this one because the paint job is a little bit too good for my standard at that time. It's quite possible that it is my paint job, in which case I'm actually surprised at how good it is. But I think this was painted by one of my friends and then gifted to me. So these three relics are from my time painting Lord of the Rings strategy battle game as a kid. I still have them. 
which is pretty neat. But you can see from looking at those miniatures that I was pretty awful at painting them and I've gotten much, much better. The next miniatures I painted were another Christmas gift at the end of 2021. And these are these miniatures here, the Starblood Stalkers. These are really charismatic little miniatures and I had a lot of fun painting them. I especially like what I was able to do with the feather, the gradient from green to yellow to orange. And I'm also really happy with how well their scales came out, the contrast in the scales, especially on their back. These miniatures were a gateway into the Seraphon and at this point, I'd only painted a few Games Workshop miniatures, but I realized that I was really starting to get into it, and that maybe I would want to play some of their games as well. So painting these miniatures and talking to a friend who plays Age of Sigma, I realized I wanted to collect an army, but I also wanted to collect an army that would be useful for Dungeons and Dragons, because that's the main reason I have all these miniatures. So I needed an army that had good monsters to use in D&D, but also be fun to paint and maybe to use in Age of Sigma. So painting these miniatures kind of told me Okay, maybe I should do Seraphon. So after painting the Starblood Stalkers and really enjoying that experience, I picked up a Skink Start Collecting box. But after buying that box, I didn't paint it for quite a while. I just bought the box and had it sitting there because the next miniature I painted was this one here. This is my Ogroid Myrmidon, which a very, very close friend bought for me because they saw how much I liked painting the Ogroid Thaumaturge. So I got this one, put it together, and put a little base together for it and painted it. This is another one of the miniatures that I'm most proud of, and I'm particularly proud of the aged copper bronze look I got on the weapons and the shield and the horn caps. It's a very simple technique. It's basically just a turquoise base coat and then dry brushing layers of bronze metallic paint, but it works really, really well to get this aged bronze look and I think I really effectively used it here in this miniature. So I'm very happy with how this one turned out. And I especially like it because now I have these two Ogroid brothers together. Uh, I call them the Beefcake Brethren because uh, they're huge muscled trolls and I can't wait to use them hopefully in a game together, the two of them but uh, I don't want to spoil too much for my players. Around this time, I was starting to use Milliput to craft more things. I had used it to craft some mushrooms on the troll and some basing elements for some other miniatures. So I had this leftover Milliput because I would roll Milliput together, use it for what I needed and have some spare. And I started at this point to use Milliput to craft some custom miniatures. I started with this one here, this skull slug which I kind of crafted with just some Milliput and then I stuck a little Games Workshop skull on the top to create this kind of custom monster miniature. And a little bit later I had again some spare Milliput, so I made this much bigger version with a bigger skull and a pile of skulls and a little towel on the end and also another little skull snake companion to go with them. So now I have this trio of custom miniatures made with Milliput and I think these will be very useful for a Dungeons and Dragons game at some point to have a little bigger snake and then two smaller companions. They are completely designed by me. Uh, very simple design, mind you, uh, but I think quite effective. Uh, so yeah, these are my skull snakes and skull slug. So it's around this point that I finally actually dug into my Start Collecting Skinks box. And the first thing I painted from that box was my Pterodons. I'm not gonna pick them all up. Um, I might just pick up this one. What I decided to do was I was very inspired by a design I saw on Instagram from Silver Paint. So what I did was I created this space vortex pattern on the pterodon wings of these two here, which I think looks really cool from above. I don't know evolutionarily why they would have these patterns on the top of their wings, uh, but they look really cool. I'm really happy with how they turned out. You can see that these figures don't have riders on them yet. Um, I decided to paint those separately. And I guess that's the downside of doing sub assemblies is sometimes you assemble the main part and then you don't want to do the other parts and you also don't want to ruin the good job you've done on the main parts. So these pterodons have kind of been without riders for almost six months. Um, but I really like how cool they look. And I also did one as this Ripodactyl. So I have my three pterodons. I guess technically this one's a Ripodactyl, but um, they don't have riders, but I really like how they turned out. Then I got into one of my favorite miniatures uh, that I've ever painted and the one that really excited me to get into Seraphon, and that is this Bastilodon. I'm very happy with how the design of this shell came out with this turquoise and purple and the white highlights. Um, I'm really happy with the base, which I crafted out of cork and foam, but it looks like it's walking over these ruins of some old civilization or perhaps a ruined Seraphon temple. As you can see, I haven't put anything on top. I'm planning to put the solar engine on this thing, 
But also, I really like how it looks without the solar engine, and given that I mainly am going to use this for Dungeons & Dragons more than Warhammer, at least for the moment, I don't know if I'm going to put anything on top of it, because uh, I kind of just don't want to spoil this. I'll probably paint the other elements entirely separately and then put them on, so that I just absolutely do not mess up this beautiful paint job. But for now, I'm really happy with my Bastilladon. I think it is the best miniature I've painted, and I really love this thing. Around this time I picked up a 3D printer, and that's been a real asset to my hobby. I've been able to use it to create terrain and some other cool things, one of which being this prop hand thing from the Adams Family. And I've also used it for some things for gaming. Here I have three little mushroom soldiers, which have a very simple paint job, I wouldn't even call it finished, but it's enough so that they stand out on the tabletop when I had an encounter with my players where they fought about 12 or 13 of these guys. The benefit of having a 3D printer is with just a few hours I could have 13 or 14 or even more of them. So I have a bunch of them in various states of paint. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but it's great that I was able to just print off a bunch of miniatures and use them in a game that week. I won't pick up this next unit because there are 12 of them, but I will pick up here this Skink Alpha, who is the head of my unit of skinks down here. And to separate her from the rest of the pack, I put her on this little base of a pile of skulls. So she stands a little bit taller. These ones, I kind of copied a similar paint scheme to my Starblood Stalkers, so they matched. Uh, but I did some interesting things with some of their shields and putting some blood effects on these vicious little lizards. So once I had finished my start collecting skinks box, around that time Games Workshop released the Sundered Fate box for Warcry, and the designs of the chameleon skinks in that box absolutely drew me to the box. But I was also really excited for the Jade Obelisk miniatures in that box, because at the moment in the game I'm running for Dungeons and Dragons, one of the critical elements in that game is a cult, and specifically a masked cult. So I thought, how great to have a box where one half is chameleon skinks, which really excite me for Seraphon, and also masked cultists, which really excite me for Dungeons and Dragons. And then also I get the box and I can play Warcry and have a bunch of cool terrain as well. So I got that box. And the first miniature I painted up from the box, Sundered Fate, which came out just recently, is this Nephrite Priestess. Now, as I've said before, I don't really like painting human miniatures. And this was no exception. I really had a hard time with this miniature. I've kind of half painted the rest of the Jade Obelisk, but I skipped ahead and finished this one, partly to test my color scheme, but partly so that it's ready to use in a game if I need it. I think I've learnt a lot from this miniature which will help me with the other ones and hopefully I can enjoy them and enjoy the paint scheme at the end a little bit more. So that's all that I've painted so far, this quite large collection here on the table of miniatures, but there's also the future because you've probably noticed this big giant dragon centerpiece. This is a resin miniature from Mersh Mini- Mersh or Mersha Miniatures. Uh, this is Tifagor, I think is how it's pronounced a giant dragon miniature and when I saw this on sale on the website I had to get it because it is huge and it is so cool. So as you can see this is kind of half painted or not even half painted, I've kind of just started. I said I didn't really like painting human miniatures, I much prefer painting monsters and I much prefer painting large monsters and this is definitely following in that trend. I'm very excited to paint it, I've enjoyed what I've painted so far, it's very exciting. Uh, so this is what I'm going to work on next, this giant dragon. I also want to share something a little bit exciting. I just got back from New Zealand quite recently, and one of the things I did there was I went to Weta Workshop, which was an amazing experience. I went on their tour, I also went through their Weta Cave, and I talked earlier in this video about how much I loved Lord of the Rings as a kid and how obsessed I still am with it, and going through that cave and seeing all these actual movie use props from Lord of the Rings and seeing how they made them in the workshop was just an incredible experience. So at the end, uh, at their gift shop, I spent maybe a little bit more than I should have, but one of the things I acquired there was this metal miniature designed by one of the designers at Weta Workshop. This little beast miniature here, and I can't wait to paint this up. And I can't wait to paint this up. I think it's really great because I had a great experience there, and instead of just buying merch, which I did plenty of, but instead of just buying merch, I was able to acquire this miniature, which I'm now gonna have an experience painting and experience on the tabletop, which whenever I get to put this miniature on the table in a game, I'm gonna be able to remember that experience at Weta Workshop. There's also one more thing that you may have seen on this table, and that's some of this terrain. It's kind of hard to play miniature games without terrain to put the minis on. So one of the things I designed here was this little portal thing, which I think will be great for Dungeons and Dragons. It's just a piece of cork as the base, 
but this little portal here in the middle is actually made up from a plastic picture frame that I got in a Christmas cracker. I think it was a really neat way to repurpose what is essentially a useless piece of junk, but I've turned it now into this little summoning portal. And the other thing here is this bridge, which I 3D printed, and then I coated it in a layer of sand to give it some texture, and then I've painted it with just some simple dry brushing and added some flocking. So it's a very simple little thing, very easy to put together, especially because the main building part was done with a 3D printer, but this is a cool little bridge that will hopefully see some use on the tabletop soon. Hopefully you enjoyed that little tour of all the miniatures I've painted so far. I've had a lot of fun with each and every single one of them, mostly, and I can't wait to keep painting more miniatures and keep expanding my collection and using these miniatures on the tabletop. It's so fun to be able to put down a miniature that I've put hard work into, putting it in front of my players on the table, seeing their reactions, and then having them kill it in like two rounds. But anyway, it's, uh, it's very satisfying. If you're interested in seeing more of my painting things, I may post miniature things on this channel occasionally, especially if you'd be interested in seeing it. But the best way to see my miniature painting and my works in progress and what I'm working on next is to follow me on Instagram. My painting Instagram is at pattyh underscore paints, which you should be able to see on the screen somewhere. And also, if you haven't followed my regular Instagram where I post music things, uh, at patty underscore ewe. That's my main Instagram where I post music and production and sound design stuff. You should follow me on both or whichever one interests you most. If you're a person who came to this video for the miniatures, uh, thanks, hopefully you enjoyed it. I definitely recommend that you stick around for some of the music stuff on this channel because I think it's pretty good. And a lot of it is great for gaming. I'm a gamer myself and I use music at my table and a lot of the music that I use is my own. So if you use music at your gaming table, whether it's tabletop war games or RPGs or anything, my music, some of it at least, hopefully will be useful for your games. So maybe check it out, see if you like it. If you're still watching and you'd like to watch more of my videos, I have a couple up on the screen right now. One of them is a video where I used my hobbying tools and I made music with them. I think it's kind of cool and it was neat to blend over my two hobbies. And this other one here is a trailer of a video game that I rescored. So I took the trailer of the video game and made completely new music for it. If that sounds interesting, maybe you'd like that video as well. Consider subscribing if you think you'd like the things that I post here on this channel. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.